But staff at Full Sutton would be tested again, this time by a volatile inmate from London convicted of attempted murder. John Onyemichi, he was a man for whom violence was second nature. He was, to some extent, a career criminal. He had track record of violence, use of drugs. He'd been in prison before, had scant regard for authority. He has this extraordinary outburst in Ealing where a policeman and a community support officer who's patrolling with him had his throat cut. In fact, it was astonishing that he survived. This was brutal, vicious, entirely unwarranted attack. And quite rightly, he was given a very long prison sentence as a result. In two... <laughs> Life a maniac. Who did this to cop? Maniac, you know. 2011, on Yamichi was... Th that's the thing. You go to prison and you'll be banged up in the cell with someone else. And days, weeks, months into your sentence, you're having to learn that your cellmate that is in the top or bottom bunk is a maniac. Yeah, you're having to learn that this guy is not right in his head, blood. Held at the Old Bailey for a minimum of 25 years for the attack. During his sentence, he would arrive at HMP Full Sutton. I met John on my first day as an officer in Full Sutton. He was just a mountain of a man, absolutely huge, uh, extremely intimidating. I met him on a number of occasions. He's a serious man. If you're going to fall out with him, you're going to have to have to end up doing something really serious, otherwise he's going to have you. He just towered over everybody. He was such a large presence of a man that you couldn't help but look and wonder what happens if he decides he doesn't want to be around you or, or doesn't want to do what you say. Where, where do you go from there? Eight years into his sentence, Onyemichi would be back in court, this time for an attack that had shocked Full Sutton. He decided that he wanted to take over the wing. He was difficult to restrain by staff, was fighting back, and was out of control. Hull Crown Court was shown footage of the shocking attack at Full Sutton, which took place on August the 9th, 2018. Onyamichi goes on this rampage. He hits a prison officer over the head from behind with a heavy pan, steals his keys, starts a fire in the kitchen, piles magazines and shoes and puts a chair and sets light to that. The attack went on for eight hours, but this footage, lasting 10 minutes, was played in court. What would happen if somebody was sort of kicking off in that manner? Is the wing staff deal with it? With the size of him and his level of violence, it was extremely hard for wing staff to even make an attempt. He was using pool cues and pots and pans he could get a hold of to attempt to attack other prisoners and staff. He's really out of control, and the prison officers can't cope. I mean, not surprisingly, he's an incredibly intimidating figure, and he's clearly out of his mind. Presiding, Judge David Tremberg was shown the shocking footage of Onyemichi's rampage, evidence that it was so out of control, a special team of riot officers needed to be called in. They are the elite officers. They are sent to the most dangerous situations, and they're given the most training. This is a particularly extreme example of their use. It took 100 officers to control or attempt to... 100 officers, you know. 100 officers for one guy, blood. Control, one man. The footage showed damage which cost the prison 15,000 pounds. It has to be serious for 100 officers to go in. It can't be just somebody's throwing a little bit of a tantrum or throwing their dummy out. It has to be a real threat to life. The CCTV footage showed that with 100 specially trained officers on the wing, Onyemichi became increasingly frantic. He jumps onto the netting between two parts of that particular wing and runs along it. 
He's out of control. He's doing whatever he wants. And he's quite prepared to hit anyone with anything just to get his own way. Finally, he falls through the netting. The prison footage captured this dramatic moment. He fell from the railings and ended up injuring himself. It's like a really solid staircase that he fell down onto and, and just got up and almost continued, which is quite scary. How a man can, you know, survive something like that and... and... Defeat to yourself. So this guy's a maniac. He's out of control and uh, obviously, as you heard, he slashed a police officer, cut a police officer's throat and that. Uh, on street, on the road, that's why he ended up in jail. Just think to yourself, imagine living in a flat block, like in the real world, in the outside world, like a normal civilian. Imagine living in a flat block and that guy is your neighbour and he's playing music at 2, 3 in the morning. Imagine having to go next door and knocking his door and asking him to turn that down. Boy, imagine how that's gonna go down. <laughs> boy, that'll be peak, boy. Boy, God forbid, man, after knock on his head up and continue wanting to fight. Even then, he, it takes some time to subdue him. It underlines very vividly that there are certain units in Full Sun that were simply too dangerous. In the end, we were able to take back E Wing. Uh, but it was a long day. He did uh, manage to cause quite a lot of damage. In court, Onya Michi pled guilty to a variety of offences, including ABH, arson and threats to kill. A further custodial sentence was handed down by the judge. The result of the rampage of Onya Michi was that he got another six years added to his sentence. One of his explanations in court when it, this was put to him is he said, I was taking steroids and I didn't know the impact they were having on me. Whether that was true or not, it didn't affect the fact that his sentence was extended. The judge stated, you are clearly a powerful man. You went on the rampage and you cared little for your own safety, let alone that of others. With his sentence extended, Onyamichi would not be eligible for parole until 20... 100, you know, imagine like how... He must be nuts. He must really pose a threat for them to call a hundred officers for one man, you know. 2042. Not even 10, a hundred. It didn't surprise me at all that he would be fighting and it would be a difficult task for them to hold him. Certain men, when they lose it, their only way of expressing how they're feeling would be by way of violence. With Onyamichi convicted for running amok, justice had been served. But for the staff, the most important factor was just getting out alive. There is such a sense of relief amongst staff because it can escalate so quickly. And we go in there to do a job and to go home to our families. And sometimes you hear of people not being able to go home to their families because of the environment we work in. And that's a risk that you do take when you start working in a maximum security prison. Onyamichi is a, a classic example of the volatility of a high security prison. It only takes one person to lose it and the whole place is in danger of going up. Onyamichi's rampage was not an isolated incident, as in the years leading up to the attack, assaults on staff in British prisons had nearly tripled. In those environments, prison officers don't feel as though they're safe. You've always got to have that in the back of your mind, but you can't let that affect the job that you do.